Hello everyone and welcome to Sharp Dress Gaming and today we are here with week one of season six of the Pokemon Global League. This of course is a Pokemon draft style league where you draft a team of Pokemon and then you face up against other teams who have also drafted Pokemon and uh, you build teams to try and counteract your opponent's team. So it's a little bit of a, di a different dynamic than typical battles because you know what your opponent's bringing so you can specialize your Pokemon towards that. Uh, this week, we are up against Hoj, who uh, we've heard of plenty of times. I saw him growing up as growing up as a young channel. He surpassed us without a problem, of course. Huge, huge uh, streamer right now on Twitch. Link for his YouTube and his Twitch will be in the description below. Um, but this is like our first actual time interacting with them as far as like uh, any kind of video content goes. We talk to him randomly every once in a while, but this is our first official video with them, so I'm super excited for that. But they are the coach of the Detroit Lit Littons. Of course, we are the coach of the Minnesota Wild Charge. I will go over both teams' drafts because I did not do a draft analysis because I sucks at them. Um, and then we can also go over his draft because I didn't do a team builder because, again, I sucks at them. So, Minnesota Wild Charge. This year, we have drafted uh, something a little bit different than usual. I could have went like the Mega Mawile like I always choose or something like that. But this year, I wanted to use Mega Venusaur. We're pretty higher up in the draft list, so I was able to pick him really soon. So I went with kind of my, my typical bulky thing with a few faster mons to um, to uh, straighten that out a little bit. So we got Mega Venusaur, Tyranitar, Rotom Wash, Chandelure, Registeel, Dragology, Beware, Granbull, Cresselia, Porygon Z, and Marowak. Cantonian Marowak, by the way. My opponent, their full draft was Tapu Fini, Victini, Mega Scissor, Amoongus, Nidoqueen, Drudagon, Hitmonlee, Metagross, Ms. Magis, Crocodile, and Meloetta. So very well put together draft, very scary one. Um, Amoongus, Mega Scissor, Victini, Tapu Fini um, were my main threats that I was worrying about. But after looking at my team, I'm like, oh, we kind of deal with Amoongus, so let's see what we can do here. Um, you can see my opponent end up bringing Mega Scissor, Needle Queen, Amoongus, Crocodile, Victini, and Tapu Fini, while I brought Rotom Wash, Cresselia, Chandelure, Tyranitar, Mega Venusaur, and Porygon Z. Uh, the sets I went with this week, just quick overrun, we're not going to go into everything. We have a Rotom Wash, we do have Defog, because although my team doesn't really care about hazards, other than like the Chandelure or the Stealth Rocks, um, I do want to try and keep my bulk about me. So I do have Defog to get rid of Stealth Rock, Spikes, that kind of nonsense. Cresselia was supposed to have safety goggles, but I didn't have them. And it was nighttime in my game, and I didn't want to bother turning the time and going and getting them from the desert. So we just went with a Lumbear instead, because it's supposed to be my counter to Amoongus. Uh, we also have Troop Room on there. And uh, Lunar Dance, if we need to do that. Uh, we have the Chandelure uh, with Choice Scarf. Uh, it is modest, so... It, it might have some problems in that regards. Uh, we have Tyranitar with leftovers. The Rotom always still has leftovers. Mega Venusaur, of course. A, a mostly bulk with a little bit of special attack, so we can 2 KO Fini. And then Porygon Z is timid with uh, Nasty Plot. And it also has the Ghostinium Z, because it is one of our Z Move users, Tyranitar being the other. Uh, my opponent's Z Move users. I believe we were Tapu Fini and Victini. I don't have it written down. I did at one point, but not on this slide. So I'm going to assume my opponent's going to expect me to lead with a Tyranitar. So I'm going to lead with Rotom Wash because things like Scissor and Needle Queen, uh, Crocodile, and Tapu Fini are going to be the ones that can counteract Tyranitar. So I want to bring out uh, Rotom first, see if we can catch him on that. So let's hop into this and see how it turns out for us. Um, while we get into this battle, be sure to like and subscribe if you have not already. And if you are excited for the Pokemon Global League, be sure to show your support. But we got Rotom Wash leading out here. And we got the Skirex Cyrix, which is the scissor, so that's perfect. I'm just going to go for Will-O-Wisp here. He has a lot of things I can switch into Will-O-Wisp, but um, I guess I should have Volt Switched. Probably would have been the best play, because there's no way that... Well, Needle Queen could have came in. He's got two things that are immune to electricity. Uh, so he does just Mega Evolve here and goes for the U-turn. So we can kind of figure out what the scissor is. It's looking like it's going to be adamant with a bunch of attack into it. Um, and I do go for the Will-O-Wisp, but Amoongus comes in here, so... Could have gotten a free Volt Switch out of here, but we're just going to burn, get some chip damage on this little, little Amoongus. 
And then I can go straight into uh, Mega Venusaur here. He could have Hidden Power, Fire, and predict that, but we're just going to say, eh, we'll take the hit. Because my Venusaur also has Hidden Power, Fire for the Samoongus and the Scissor. So, as long as we can keep keep bulky here. I'm going to Volt Switch, get a little more chip damage on the Amoongus. Chip damage is never a bad idea with Amoongus. Uh, although a Regenerator can, of course, heal that chip. And we're going to bring in the Venusaur. Amoongus does go for a Sludge Bomb here. Neutral damage. We aren't Mega yet, so it's going to do a little more than we would have liked. And we're going to see the Black Sludge come out from the Amoongus. Uh, here with the Venusaur... I believe I synthesize, expecting him to switch out. So he is going to switch the Amoongus out for Needle Queen. Um, I might have even Giga I can't remember. I can't remember. Well, we're going to see the Mega Venusaur come out here. And we'll see what I actually ended up going for. Sludge Bomb. So I did Sludge Bomb. It was neutral to Amoongus. I didn't expect... Oh, right, Scissor could have came out there, but again, I've hidden Power Fire. Uh, I am just going to Giga Drain here while the Needle Queen goes to set up Stealth Rocks. So, pretty nice Giga Drain on our part. We can kind of see how this Needle Queen's built. Because we do have a little bit of special attack, not a ton, but we do almost 50% to this Needle Queen, which is just lovely. Alright, we bring it under 50. It did take a Sludge Bomb already. He's going to go for Ice Punch. He can't freeze because of sheer force, and we do have Thick Fat, so we're going to take that pretty nicely. Go for another Giga Drain. Unfortunately, the Needle Queen does live. Now I make kind of a misplay here. I was about to synthesize, but I'm like, no, I'm just going to uh, Giga Dra or Sludge Bomb uh, in case something tries to come in on the Giga Drain. Uh, but he goes for Earthquake, which does bring us down to about 50. And had I synthesized here, we would have got a free synthesis because Needle Queen does go down to Life Orb. So that is rather unfortunate there, and it's going to leave our Venusaur really low uh, while he's able to just bring in Victini for free here. And I don't have my Stealth Rocks up yet, and I still have Stealth Rocks on my side of the field. So, if we can get Rotom in here at some point and defog, that'd be great. But instead I bring in Tyranitar, because Tyranitar can take anything Victini wants to go for outside of like a U-turn or a Signal Beam. Um, but we're going to see here, we're going to see Psychic, so I'm like, okay, this thing's special Victini. That's, that's a little more manageable. Uh, probably has Glaciate or something. Not entirely sure yet, we do know I have Psychic though. And we're going to see if it is choiced, which it is not. We do see the U-turn on the Victini, which is going to hurt. Not going to lie. Uh, but I do go for Stone Edge here with the Tyranitar. Uh, I believe. Or I get up Stealth Rock. It's one of the two. It's one of the two. I either go for Stone Edge or Stealth I go for Stealth Rock this turn is what I do. So I go for Stealth Rock because I want that set up so the Victini can't be switching in for free constantly. And plus we get to chip the, the Amoongus whenever it comes in. All the fun stuff, really. So now I'm going to stay in here and go for a Stone Edge, because either he's going to Swords Dance, or Bullet Punch, or U-Turn. <laughs> uh, and I know I take a Bullet Punch. Well, actually, I didn't know that. I calc the Scissor wrong, because I was just using the default set, and that's not a fully invested Scissor. Whereas the U-Turn, we do still live, uh, and the Crocodile does come in here. And I do go for Stone Edge, and I completely whiff it, which is just lovely. Good, good to go on that. Uh... Crocodile does resist, but we are max attack, so it would have chunked it pretty nicely. I'm going to go for Protect here to see what this thing, uh, which I assume is going to be Choice Scarfed, is going to scarf itself into. It is going to be Knock Off, which is not great because the majority of my team is not going to take that. Uh, essentially, at this point, I have to hope Venusaur can take it after Stealth Rocks and take another one in succession. So, this is going to be where it matters if I... Uh, if I had a, if I would have synthesized earlier, like I planned to, um, we would have been able to live that. Sandstorm does subside, but now the knockoff, the knockoff did way too much, and I, again, I don't have any switch-ins to take two knockoffs. So Venus is going to go down and give this thing a free Moxie boost, which is like, oh boy. We know what Krugadal can do with Moxie boost. We've used him in Draft League before. Um, after some quick calcs, I realized Cresselia can live a knockoff. And this is a point where I probably should have Lunar Danced, but I go for Trick Room here to reverse the Choice Scarf Crocodile, because I wasn't sure yet if this thing was adamant or not, um, so I don't know if my Chandelure outspeeds with Choice Scarf, because I know uh, if he is Jolly, he outspeeds, but if he's adamant, we outspeed. So I go for the Trick Room, and then I'm just going to go for an Energy Ball. Cresselia is just going to go down here, but we're going to do a lot of damage to the Crocodile, which will put in range of other things, especially with a special defense drop. It's going to be looking nice. We do, unfortunately, give uh, Grudal another KO to give it another Moxie boost. But like I said, uh, it's either got to switch out or it's going to faint to 
what I hope is a connecting hydro pump from my Rotom wash that I'm going to bring in here now. So we're playing from really far behind. Our Crest and our um, Venusaur have already gone down. Tyranitar is chunked pretty good, so our, our defensive core there is gone. So we have to rely on Rotom, Porygon Z, and uh, almost dead Tyranitar there. So we're going to go for Hydro Pump. We missed the Amoongus, which it wouldn't have done a ton of damage, but it would have helped chunk this thing a little bit so that something else could take it out later, uh, which we'll see if that ends up mattering or not. But we get the Leftovers recovery while the Amoongus gets burned after Black Sludge. I'm going to switch the Rotom out because I don't want to get Giga Drain. I'm just going to bring in Tyranitar and sack the sucker off. Because like I said, he's he's already going down. We might as well just get rid of him, get a free switch into something else. Oh, I already have, I have Chandelure too. I don't know why I forgot about Shandy. Well, we're going to see the Giga Drain from the Amoongus. That's going to KO me. It will give him a little bit of health back. So actually, after this... No, he still would have been chunked pretty good from the Hydro Pump. So remember that, kids. Amoongus is going to get buffed by the Sandstorm. And then the Black Sludge, and then the Burn. All of the animations. And then here, I am going to bring in Chandelure. Even though we are Choice Scarfed, it's going to be our best option for this Amoongus. Actually, now that I think about it, Hydro Pump might not have mattered here, but anyway. Uh, we're just going to go for a Shadow Ball. Uh, the Amoongus is going to switch out. There's no way it's going to stay in and take an Overheat. And he has both Feeny and Victini here, so Feeny is going to come in. It's going to get chunked by some Stealth Rocks. Um, and then the Misty Surge will go up, and it's going to be taking a modest Shadow Ball from Chandelure, which is nothing nothing to scoff at here. So here comes the Shadow Ball. And it will put the Feeny under 50% to a point where another Shadow Ball uh, should actually KO it here. We're going to see the Leftovers recovery. And then the Twisted Dimension will return to normal. So now we are faster than the Feeny. I go for a Shadow Ball here, uh, and let's see, are we able to KO the Feeny? We are not, we actually get a low roll on the Shadow Ball, which is really unfortunate because now Chandelure is going to faint to the Scald. If we would have just KO'd that Feeny there, we could have used Chandelure for the rest of the game, essentially just switching out when we need to, and Feeny's going to get hit by the Sandstorm. Because at this point, I'm pretty sure the, the Crocodile is adamant. So, yeah, it's really unfortunate we get the low roll on Shadow Ball there, but Amoongus is going to come back in while I bring in my Porygon. I know I have to go for the nasty plot, and I know Porygon doesn't outspeed the um, the uh, Crocodile, unfortunately. So, but we can at least use it to to get rid of this Amoongus. But we're gonna see the Spore. He actually forgot uh, that the Misty Train stops uh, status conditions, which is nice for me. That's why I was a little confused why Amoongus and Tapu Fini were on this team, because like they counteract each other, but to each their own, I guess. Uh, and you don't always have to bring Feeny, and the terrain doesn't last forever, so. We're going to go for the Tri-Attack here. This is Adaptability Boosted plus 2 Tri-Attack, and we still miss the KO on the Amoongus. It's like, come on. If this was a Regenerator Amoongus, that Hydro Pump earlier didn't matter. The only thing that really messed with this game was the uh, the Shadow Ball. The Shadow Ball not uh, getting a max roll in damage, and then, of course, uh, freaking not synthesizing with the Venusaur is put us really far behind here. So now Scissor's going to switch in, the Moongus will switch out to get some Regenerator. Points of Stones will dig in the Scissor. Scissor's not going to enjoy a plus two Shadow Ball from the Porygon. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, he's just going to Bullet Punch me here. So I'll just go for another Shadow Ball, hope for the best. He actually does not Bullet Punch, so I don't know if he didn't have it or what the case was there, but we're able to pick up a KO on the Scissor. So at this point, I have, I have accepted my demise, and I'm just trying to get as many KOs as I can. Uh, to make the differential uh, closer. Because for those of you who have never seen a draft battle league before, uh, it's kind of like a fantasy football thing, but uh, of course more towards Pokemon. We're going to see Super Power KO the Porygon 2, which will drop attack and defense, but uh, Moxie will bring the attack back up, so it's back neutral. But essentially, you get points. Um, each Pokemon gets a point for each KO that they take, and they lose a point every time they faint. And then at the end of the battle, uh, whoever wins, how many Pokemon they had left determines how many points overall that their team gets. So right now, I believe it's... A, well, Crookedile is going to actually faint to this Hydro Bomb, so Rotom's going to bring it down to a 2-0. So my opponent as a team will get two points, and then each Pokemon will get a point for each KO they've taken, and they will lose a point for how many faints they've taken. And each of my Pokemon get a point for each KO they've taken, and lose a point for how many uh, faints that they took. So, just 
quick quick overview summary of, of Draft League Battles for those of you who don't know. Victini's going to be able to come in, though, finish this game off on Fort, and he's going to he's gonna give Victini a point here to finish off the game. So, unfortunately, I don't think any of my Pokemon came out of this positive. I think the best situation was, like, the Rotom's neutral because it took a KO and it fainted. Um, what else we got? Porygon 2 took a KO and fainted, so it's neutral. Chandelure... It's just straight neutral. Tyranitar, because of the Sandstorm on the Feeny, took a point, lost a point. I believe that's how it works. I believe the Pokemon that sets up Sandstorm gets any points for KOs. It depends on what league you're in. They kind of change the rules depending on which league. Um, Cresnelia took no points, just lost a point. Chandelure also just lost a point. Needle Queen counted as a suicide because it was a uh, Life Orb KO, so nobody got a point from that. Needle Queen just lost a point, but nobody gained a point. And Venusaur, I think, just lost point. I don't think he gained anything. Which is unfortunate, but yeah, good game to Poge. Uh, this this was my first singles battle in so long. Probably since the last league we were in, which we didn't finish out because it ended up getting all really weird and they restarted and I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to do that because this was coming back, so... We're a little bit rusty, but we're gonna get rid of that rust and we're gonna we're gonna bring it back. We're gonna bring it back. But yes, good game to poach. Be sure to go check out all of his links in the description below. And we'll see you guys next week for week two. Uh, we are up against young Sketch, young Flex himself, Sketchy Smeargle, and the Seattle Smeargles. So let's see if we can bring it back for that. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Stay sharp, everyone, and go wild charge.